Hello and welcome to the program. I am Ama Marcus. We start our report today from the United Nations, sure. where in a significant opening to the General Assembly, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres delivered a stark warning, stating, we are edging towards the unimaginable, a powder keg that risk engulfing the world. Well, Guterres highlighted the urgent issues of rising impunity, inequality, and unpredictability globally. He has called on all 193 member states to prioritize effective, inclusive, and networked multilateralism to tackle these pressures and challenges together. Well, joining us from the United Nations General Assembly in New York this afternoon is VOA's Antonio Labruto. Hello, Antonio. Thank you for joining us today. Well, hello, Alma. Thank you. Okay. Could you give us updates on the latest events that are happening at the General Assembly? Absolutely. So this morning, um, the speeches are just getting started here. The Secretary General, uh, just as we stepped out here, was just starting to speak. Um, security around me is everywhere. I don't know if you can hear the helicopters. There are two of them directly overhead of me. There are about eight boats in the East River, which is about on the side here, which faces the United Nations. Uh, security is incredibly, incredibly tight here ahead of President Joe Biden's speech. Mm. So you mentioned President Joe Biden's speech. Of course, we understand this would be his last speech at the United Nations General Assembly. Could you talk us through what we're expecting to hear during that speech? Absolutely. So the Biden administration has been relatively tight-lipped about what they're going to be saying. However, like you said, this is uh, by President Biden's last speech. He has a few months left in his presidency to really prove to, uh, to the world and to America that he has done you know, what the, a great job over the past three and a half years, and that his vice president, Kamala Harris, who is the now the Democratic nominee, is capable of leading the world uh, through now, through her term, her, her possible four-year term. Um, apart from that, there's been some talk of possibly about a million MPOX uh, vaccines being donated to the African continent. Um, he'll also be talking about uh, the strengthening of democracies and atlas democracies throughout the world, particularly in Africa as well. Um, one of the big things to mention, though, is that President Joe Biden has been one of the uh, one of the presidents with the most foreign policy experience coming into the presidency in any in any modern sense. He spent most of his time on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, his almost 50 year career in the United States' uh, congressional upper house. Okay, so we understand parts of the agenda for discussions today would include the war in Gaza, the war in Ukraine, climate change, and the United Nations Security Council reform. Now, could you talk us through these, you know, conversations that are to take place, and of course, the key factors we're expecting to see? All right, absolutely. So, um, President Biden certainly, and in, in the United Nations in general, has a very, very difficult task of addressing the escalating tensions between uh, Gaza, Hezbollah, Israel, and the Middle East. This is going to be an incredibly, incredibly difficult situation now, especially within the last week we've seen these tensions escalate. It's going to be a very, very tricky, tricky situation that the Biden administration is hoping to solve, other world leaders are hoping to solve. This is going to come to an end uh, rather quickly. Also with Ukraine and Russia as well, that war is, is now also escalating. There are going to be a ton of uh, a ton of uh, sideline events that are hopefully going to be addressing that, hopefully coming to the conclusion of peace. Mm, hopefully, we're hoping to see that. Well, still at the United Nations, we understand that uh, President Vladimir Zelensky is currently in New York. We're expecting to see an actual step, you know, where foreign uh, foreign countries are actually going to pledge actual help to help Ukraine. And of course, I understand they are also asking for weapons so they could shoot longer into Russia. Could you talk us through about that? Absolutely. So uh, President Zelensky has been uh, here and within the United States this uh, this past week, week and a half, uh, to really drum up support now for the Ukraine war. They have made that incursion into Russia now and seeing how far they can sustain that, how far they can sustain themselves and really the wider war in general. Uh, President Zelensky was in Pennsylvania just this last week, uh, touring a munitions factory, really trying to, like I said, drum up support, at least in the United States, for a little bit more money, a little bit more ammunition, and to really showcase the world that what their you know, that their fight is a good fight to fight, and also that they uh, they can maintain their lines and can continue their war. Mm, okay, so let's move a bit from European nations now. Let's come to the African continent. We understand there is a push to have more African countries on the Security Council table. So talk us through what's that all about? Absolutely. So um, the United Nations uh, released, uh, released last week that they were planning on uh, allowing, I believe it was two more 
uh, seats to be opened to um, the United Nations Security Council for uh, two more uh, member states to be included in these discussions. And now this was originally going to be, I, um, we'll have to see what happens this week, what this actually comes about, but a, uh, a major nation from the African continent and a, uh, and a more developing nation from the African uh, continent as well. And to really give these two perspectives a little more of a, potentially a first-hand account of some of the conflict, some of the potential devastation, some of even the money that the United Nations would be giving to uh, to these particular countries and having that uh, having that perspective, having that real um, first hand account of what's happening. Mm. So what are we looking to achieve at the end of this conference? Um, at the end of this conference, uh, this is uh, this is going to be uh, the summit of the future. And so uh, this is certainly going to be a future like uh, like for the African continent. This is uh, the African youth make up around 60 percent of the continent itself. This is certainly going to be a very, very forward-looking summit. This is going to be a summit for the African continent, for youth, for climate change, hopefully get some actual concrete solutions. This is going to be hopefully a, a United Nations General Assembly where we can see some peace dialogue happening and a really, really forward-looking into 2025 and potentially some de-escalations of war and some tensions. Okay. Thank you very much, Anthony, for joining us this afternoon. We appreciate you. Thank you, Alma. Okay.